On this episode of You Can't Eat the Grass, the farm goes from gray to green. As we plant the greenhouse, will it all go to plan? Stay tuned to find out. I got a bit sick. I'll see if she brings it. You want it? You want it? You want it? Oh, it's pretty nice out, huh? Yeah. Spring? Mm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first week of warm weather at all. We're still getting freezing nights, but you know, it, it really does feel like spring. Um, it's nice and warm, you know, I need my hat because it's sunny out um, and it's, it's really pleasant to be out here working. And maybe one of the things that is the most exciting about spring is it means that things are starting to come up in the farm, things are starting to pop out of the ground all over the property. And one thing that I'm very interested in is if our peonies from last year are doing anything. I haven't been down here and checked it out, so let's go take a peek. I see, I see red growth. There's stuff that's actually starting to, to grow here. It's crazy to think that when we planted these, you know, it was middle of the winter, freezing cold, you know, snow had been on the ground. You know, I was, I was a little bit nervous. I've never really planted bare root peonies before. So I, you know, I researched it before doing it, but I wasn't confident to know that, you know, it's for sure gonna have success. So it makes me happy to see that most of these holes have at least some sort of activity starting already. Won't be long, won't be long until these are gonna actually look like real full plants. We didn't actually get the full rows planted. You know, where I'm sitting right now is actually supposed to be the peonies. You know, here behind me, this is, you know, as far as we could get. What I'm sitting on is, you know, there's rock piles, there's compost piles, there's a lot of garbage down here that we need to deal with. So I actually have 200 peonies in my garage that you know, I need, I need to think about, I need to figure out what the plan is. The spring has been so cold that we're, we're a little bit behind of where we hoped we would be. We thought that most of March we'd be able to be out here working full time, working the ground, and that's just not really the case. We've also had, you know, some, some family things that we're prioritizing this year. So, you know, those peonies, they're not gonna get in the ground. We still have, days and days of work to do before that ground will be prepped. So I think my plan is I'm gonna do what I said I was going to do in the winter and I'm gonna pot those peonies up into pots. In the first year that we moved to the farm, we purchased Pot Mountain, which is behind me. Um, we bought a couple thousand of these one gallon pots and they've kind of saved my butt <laughs> a bunch over the years. Um, they're kind of, you know, these cost a lot to buy. Having this stack means that when I need 100, 200, 300 pots, they're there for me and I can use them. And then, you know, when they're done, they just go back into the pile. So this is what I'm gonna use to pot up those peonies. I've been keeping an eye on these peonies all winter. It's actually been cold enough in the garage that it's been pretty close to fridge temperatures. So they've done really well. It's only over the last two weeks that the days have been sunny and warm. And so it's heating up my garage into, you know, a pleasant place for me to hang out, but also a place that makes peonies think, oh, it's spring, I better start growing. So they haven't dried out. They kind of have only just started to put some growth on. They're the perfect stage to get into pots they can hang out in the pots for the entire year if I really need to. Um, so, you know, just get them planted, get them dealt with. How's it going? 
it's going pretty good. Got some peonies potted up. You know, it's nice, it's really nice and really warm out, but the compost pile is still frozen. I only have the top <laughs> layer of, of dirt to be able to grab, but it'll be enough to be able to finish potting up all of these. How do the peonies look? They look pretty good. You know, they're only just starting to wake up. There's nothing rotten, which was, you know, the concern if they get kept in a place that's too warm over the winter. They'd rot. Sleeping in dirt. What you doing, Sam? I am digging a hole. Oh yeah. You like that? You only know it's up to. Here. That's pretty good. Over my boot. Yeah. Yeah, I try. I try to did it. To, to. I. What's how big my pile is? Well, it's pretty good. I'm proud. I appreciate that you like digging. The weather is finally warming up and that means that uh, today I'm going to be able to do some prep work in the greenhouse so that we can get those lizzies in the ground. But before we do that, uh, they are a little bit dry so I got to water them and that's a bit of a task so I'm going to get to that first. This is the time of plenty at the farm as far as starts go. We got a couple racks of them here and then you know we got a big old pile of them over there as well as we got some in the bathroom, of course, over here as well. And then, you know, of course, there's, there's more. There's, there's just, they're everywhere right now. I like it though. I like it when everything is alive around you. It makes you feel like you're living in Pee Wee's Playhouse or something like that. But anyways, no more delaying. I gotta water these. How's your hole doing now, Sam? I actually made it into a waterfall. Oh yeah, nice waterfall. Yeah. Some good digging. I'm gonna need this wheelbarrow though. Okay. Okay, next up I need to get this greenhouse and this greenhouse completely cleaned up and watered and then close up the sides. Then it can start warming up the soil, waking it up, getting it ready for the transplants. And then tomorrow, Serena can start planting out all of those we should probably start with the ranunculus and the anemones because they're they're ready to go which will free us up a lot of space up in the outbuilding it's a lot of work to take care of each and every tray you know each one has to be watered and watched so uh you know just getting rid of a bunch of those out will make our life easier one thing we talk about a lot but it's really hard to completely understand uh from a viewer's perspective is just how dry it is here in Kelowna so it's like the middle of March right now and like look how dry these hills are right you can see a little bit of snow up top and stuff but essentially you know all over this farm uh, anywhere there's dirt is dead right <laughs> there's a few areas uh, where the grass is a little bit green but you know I, I don't remember the last time it's rained here like we, we really don't get very much moisture and and that's one of the things that makes uh, our growing region so unique um, you know, and why we have to like irrigate everything when other people don't even have to worry about that at all.
You got your pedal. I told you guys, I, I would dead it. <laughs> Let's see what this puppy can do. Pretty hard. No, not my puppies. Oh no, I had to turn. <laughs> it's kind of hard to pedal it. For sip. I turn it for you. You. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few plants in here. Just a few. But this is the moment we have been working towards. We're finally going to start putting some stuff outside and in the ground. They look like they're ready to go in the ground. Yeah. I was hoping to have put them in the ground two or three weeks ago, but it's been so cold. And even, you know, last night got down to minus six. So it's still kind of, kind of borderline. Like it's not necessarily the best But in the weather. greenhouse, I think they'll be fine. I'm, I'm willing to risk it at this point because it's, if they don't get in, they don't get in soon. It's like, when, when are they going to get in? It's, it's got to happen. No risk it, no biscuit. Yep. Okay. We got a rainbow. We got red, pink, yellow, and orange. You know, I was, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed looking at this entire rack, you know, being 2,700, but you know, now that it, like I got four trays already in the cart, you know, looking at this, you know, it's, it's not that much. It's only going to be two beds, you know, you know, I'm kind of thinking like it'll take three or four hours, but you know, like it's, it's all going to go out pretty fast. This time of year can be, can be intimidating, right? Because Everything stacks up. There's so many plants, you know, it feels like there's a lot to get done. Um, but it's definitely one of those like slow and steady wins the race type situations. Like as long as I just keep working at it, you know, keep moving forward on it, you know, it all gets done. This is our fifth year. You know, it, it's, I'm kind of finally emotionally <laughs> at the point that it doesn't feel as overwhelming. It just, like, I know that I'll get there as long as I keep moving forward. You found a shovel for me. Cause I need a bigger shovel for these. Got everything you need? I got my shovel. Let's do this. Then you just like push it and the pole weighs it. Dusty. Okay, what should we start with? Rosso. It's my least favorite color. So this is the one, if I kill them all, I won't feel bad about it. So we'll start with this one. We do this to ourselves every year. <laughs> the tunnels, we've never put doors onto the ends. And so what we do is we just end up like stacking like lots of rocks and wood and things down on the bottom, but it actually takes a lot to put all this in place, which means that we then don't want to open it. And so then we're kind of like stuck out of the tunnels. Um, you know, I was, I was just saying to Ian, like we have like a friend whose farm has like a great solution for ways to make, you know, an easy, easy door where you just slit the plastic. And it's like, we've been talking about doing it for years and we just, we just haven't, but Maybe, maybe this is the year because I'm okay. gonna have to go crawl in on the side of the tunnel and it's uh, it's a pain in the butt. It's hard once the plants are planted because you have to go over the bed. I know, I have to like leave like a path in the middle of the bed too. We're doing it this way right now, but maybe that's a job for later in the week. is really hot in here. <laughs> Feeling no, no complaints, no complaints, but uh, this is not, not a coat work area. This is definitely a 
like only wear <laughs> pants and a sweater. I'm really excited. This, this greenhouse is where we're doing one of our experiments for the year of having tulips that are going to be ready about two weeks earlier than our outside of a tunnel tulips and it looks it looks like it's doing it right they're actually starting to grow even though you know nothing else is happening on the rest of the farm we don't even have crocuses like popping out of the ground our plan was a bed of tulips in the greenhouse should bloom at the same time as when daffodils have bloomed on our farm because daffodils, they're hard to sell just on their own. But if we have daffodils and tulips, it's enough to like start the selling for the season. So we're really hopeful that, you know, like I forget, what did we plant? Like 3,000 daffodils? Something like that. It was like a crate, like two or 3,000. Well, our entire fence line is like super, super densely planted with daffodils. Um, we should have lots of blooms, you know, from here on out. Um, and then having, hey, get out of here, bad cat. <laughs> um, and then having these will make it so that we'll actually be able to sell them. So it's pretty exciting. It's exciting to think about, you know, opening up the stand maybe in, in like three weeks. Maybe we'll be down at the farmer's market, you know, for the, the end of April. On the case of I know, he might. These ranunculus look really incredible. They look massive, they look happy. The problem is they're not really supposed to look like that. The plan is when you pre-sprout them like this, you're supposed to kind of just wait until some roots grow because if you wait too long and they look like this, you actually have a big problem, which I'll show you right now, which is I've made root cake. <laughs> All of the roots are completely grown in to each other they're completely overgrown and so this makes the job from oh i just grab like a couple roots and i stick it into the ground to instead i need to pick apart you know every little chunk to try to you know get the roots still attached have something to plant it just it turns this job from a really fast job into a fairly difficult job um I've done this in the past. This isn't the first time that I've let them get overgrown in the tray. So I know that they'll be fine. I know that like ripping apart the roots, like they're not going to die on me when I do this. Um, but normally it takes me about two hours to plant a bed with the roots like this. It's probably going to take, you know, potentially twice as long. Do you just rip them all apart first and then play? Or did you go do it as you go? Well, I do and I don't, right? Because um, it's hot in here. So if I rip, when the roots get exposed and like ripped apart, then they're, they're sensitive to, um, to drying out, right? Like I want to get them planted into the ground fairly quickly. So, you know, if it was not so hot in the greenhouse, um, I probably would just break apart the entire, the entire thing and then go from there but I kind of want to do it like little bit by little bit. Do a few, plant a few, do a few, plant a few. Yeah, or like, you know, cause each of these trays have a hundred. So maybe, you know, I could rip apart 25 and then plant 25. Um, it's, it's definitely, it's not as quick. Mars gets it, plant. I know. It's gonna go from nothing to very green in here very quickly. I can't wait. These are big beds. Yeah. By the time we come picking these, we'll be able to lift the sides so I can pick it from, from the outside and the inside. Planting itself goes pretty quick. Though. Oh yeah. The only thing that makes it take two hours is the fact that it's 400 things, right? Yeah. So it's like 120 minutes, you know? It means I 
you know, I do, I do them pretty quickly, right? Like I do, I can plant for a minute, you know, or faster, but having to pick them apart, you know, do everything. Hello? No, you're a badly behaved cat who doesn't understand how farms work. You have to teach him. Look at this. He's like, oh, here, I'll dig some holes for you. Yeah, it's not how it works. It's not how it works. He is excelling at advanced cat behavior though. Get no, it. no. <laughs> bad bad cat. cat. Digging holes in the tulips. Very bad cat. He's like, well, you're digging holes, why can't I? Bad cat. I remember the first time that I was out here and out of nowhere, it was like a cloud of leaves started falling. It kind of freaked me out. Um, and you know, it's just, it's something that happens here every spring. We're surrounded by, you know, all these cherry orchards, you know, like my, my neighbor beside me. And the way that our weather pattern works is clouds come into the valley and they push all the air down. So because of that, the, you know, the district doesn't let us do any sort of burning over the winter for air quality um, reasons. It's, it, you know, it holds all the smoke down in the valley. But on the spring, when you got these beautiful clear days, like what today is, um, the orchards are allowed to do a burn. They're allowed to burn their slash pile. And what happens is the fires are so big and they're so hot that when they dump a new load of cherry branches or apple branches or whatever they're burning, um, the heat of the fire just pushes all those lightweight leaves up into the sky and then you know, miles later they fall down. Um, you know, like I look around and I can't see a fire anywhere. <laughs> There's no fires um, for me to spot, but um, that's where those leaves came from. You're planting away. Yep. Got two or three varieties. So sun's gonna go down soon. So it's a good experiment to see if they could survive the night. Because <laughs> it's uh, my least favorite colors that I started with. But I don't know, looks pretty good. Pretty exciting to be yeah. in a greenhouse full of green stuff. Yeah, I agree, it looks good. So last year we had 500 per bed. And the plan was, I think to do 600. Now, like when I went to plant it, I was like, there's 16 trays. That means I have to get eight per bed. <laughs> um, but, you know, 800, 600, same difference, right? You can make it work. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. Like who, like, who cares? There's more than we need. That's how many, we are currently growing more than we could possibly need. Yeah. So, you know, if they struggle a little bit because we plant them too dense. We'll still have too many. We'll still have too many. Kaya. I'm feeling pretty good. We've gotten half of the ranunculus done. I was a little nervous about fitting them in so tight together, but I ended up getting more than half planted in a single bed. So we're gonna be fine. We're gonna get these all in in two beds. Today, I'm out, I got one bed left to do. And then once that's done, I have one entire greenhouse planted, one, you know, significant chunk of what needs to get finished completed for the season. Coming soon. The racks look really good all green, but the plants will look better in the ground. Well, all of them are fitting on this rack now before I had, you know, a third of them under under the other lights. So even though it's still a full rack, for me, this is this is looking this good. Is progress. Yeah. And you'll be excited of what we have left to 
plant because there's only two colors left. Oh yeah, that's pretty One cool. full bed of orange and yellow. Oh yeah. We're gonna have so much of these bright colored ones. I'm, I'm really excited. I don't have very many of this specific type of shovel. There's like one or two of these on the entire farm because all my other plants are like these skinny little plants. So I have all these skinny shovels. So I keep being like, don't lose this, my precious. I need this important, but rarely used tool. What do you think of all the tulips? Makes me pretty happy. I was actually thinking, because we still have a little bit of a gap at the end of this, this section where we have the crates, and we have some more crates in the garage too. Um, maybe I should buy some glads. You know, it's a little cold to put glads in the ground for us here, but I could definitely have glads in the greenhouse. And last year we experimented doing some glads in crates and they did great. So I could fill up the last little chunk of this row with some greenhouse glads and get like a earlier succession of glads. That's a good idea. We just need to buy some. It's hot, hot in here. <laughs> you know, even a little bit of sun in onto the greenhouse and it becomes not jacket weather. But yesterday, cloudy, it was jacket in a cheek <laughs> weather. Maybe I'll even have extra space. Maybe I won't even need two whole beds. What do you think? Well, that'd be pretty good. There's more weight in the last one than, than you thought. Yeah, I put like a crazy amount. Though, so we bought ranunculus from Two Place. We bought some more simple colors from Van Nort, the Amandine series. And then we got the Italian ranunculus from Unicorn Blooms. And the unicorn bloom ones are like a million times better colors wise, um, but also the plants are just crazy healthy. Whereas all the amandines had real bad germination, you know, kind of a third of them had actually grown into plants, like how every single one of the unicorn blooms ones did. And there was like a lot of like rotten um, corms in there. So, you know, that's part of why I was able to fit so much in this side, you know, and I'm like, Ugh. you know, I think some of them will still grow, but there's a chance that there might be a, a patch that's kind of spotty. Off to the races. Away we go. I love pulling them out. It's like the ultimate, ultimate cake. Oh, just my sheep cake right there. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> This is a lot easier too when the dirt isn't wet, when it's dry. They kind of, they tease apart a little bit easier. But when they're dry, then they dry out really quickly for when it's hot in the tunnel. So they get kind of sad, a little bit of transplant shock. So I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. I don't know what's the best technique with this. I knew this last year. The best technique is to pre-sprout them and plant them when they've only just started growing. And they only just have a little bit of roots. Uh, Letting them grow till the roots turn into layer cake is not. Better late than never. What do you think, Ian? If I'd just been like, eh, you know what? I give up on them. No ranunculus this year. Well, that would be quite disappointing. And we'd be giving up on lots of money too, because they're one of the best selling flowers. Mm, I see you use the, the money argument against me. Effective. Emotional damage. <laughs>
once you got them split, they plant pretty quick. Oh yeah. The splitting, I mean, if it wasn't for the splitting, then it would be like normal plugs and you know, everything would go fairly quickly. Next year. We'll do better next year. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll no, strive. No guarantees. No guarantees. We'll strive to do better next year. Serena's been planting away for a few hours now. Let's go check in on her progress. Hello. Okay. Hello. I got the back open. I got this open. Hello. Looking pretty good in here. I know. I'm almost there. I'm almost done. I don't have much left here. Probably like. 10-15 minutes to finish this up and do a little bit of a tidy up um, feels pretty incredible you know like looking around the farm at this point you know we have one of the three tunnels completely planted um, with plants to fill the other two you know uh, the majority of the farm is prepped you know it's it's not gonna be long until it's really filling in like this is this is the real start to the season it's you know it's it's coming on and you know it always feels amazing to be outside and growing things and you know have my hands in the soil and be surrounded by lush green uh, makes me very happy to be back out here after a long cold winter Thank <laughs> you.